Good morning, guys. Today I want to show you another segment of the lesson on Skype that Sean and I had uh, about a week ago at the time of, of this being filmed. This has got some really good little nuggets of information in it and some aha moments for me. I hope that through watching me go through my lesson with Sean, you will also have some aha moments from this. The beginning of this, we're, we're talking about trying to throw further into the picture. We, we've already covered the backswing and the transition a little bit. Now this is more about the actual contact with the ball and the release and, and the finish. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Here we go. So if you were gonna hold the club like a sword, you remember this analogy? Oh yeah. Okay, so if I had a bamboo shoot in front of me, and I'm cutting through this bamboo shoot towards you guys. Do you see where the club actually pulled my hand over into this pronated rotation? Yeah. Okay. So it's not, if I did this, that's like a check swing in baseball or a check swing in ping pong. Whereas that, you can really see that the beginning of the cut is here. The end of the cut is there, and then the weight of the instrument is releasing me. Right. So, do you see where the release occurred? Yeah, it was out there in front of you. Exactly. So, peak speed yeah. in the swing is here, not there. That's what I've had so <clears throat> for so long. That has been my issue. <clears throat> now, here's the here's the real question I have for you: is that I understand throwing and getting peak speed out there. I, I know yep. that that's what I need, and I know that that's what should happen as long as I have my brain in the right place. What right. happens when I can't get my brain and body to do that? What what can I do? Because I've been trying that now, and I still feel like when I look at it on camera and I go back and slow it down, I yep. still see this flip at it, even though my brain the whole time was out here is yep. it just something that's been ingrained for so long it's going to take a long time to get it out of there? Yeah. So so what happens is a flip is simply you throwing at the ball. So if you were to throw at the ball and the club passes your hand here, then you'll get this look. Right. <clears throat> but if I'm throwing over there, and if you ever film yourself throwing the club, you'll notice your lag is short quality. And it should be automatic. Well, in, in, just imagine you're throwing the club into your screen there. So where did you feel peak speed? Well, I heard the whoosh out here. Perfect. So if you, when you look at your swing on video after this, you'll notice that in order to go get that sound over here, you had to shift weight, you had to clear hips, and then you experienced that release over here. So Feel that? That looks great. Is it so what are the things that would prevent you from getting there? I think if I had to put my finger on it, it's an instinct that you must make an effort to make good contact with the ball or it will not happen. There it is. So you're saying, oh, it's all fine and dandy, Sean. I'm going to throw over there, but what about the ball? Sure. Then you can't throw that way anymore, can you? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So here's, here's the cool part. This is this. You're going to love this. Your listeners are going to love this. You're literally five swings away from greatness. Oh, stop it. Come on. Five swings away because your swing looks great. You showed me a nice throw right now. Sure. So if you throw the club come hell or high water, and then you just observe how you're hitting the ball. And a good way to go about it, have you seen my predict contact and direction video? 
Yeah, yeah, the Goldilocks, and there's four different uh, four different okay. things you predict. So if I if I set up to the ball from here and I throw the club into that target, right now it feels like I'm going to miss the ball entirely. So all right, let's see how much I miss the ball by if I throw over there. I'm throwing over there. Throw over there. I saw the blur. That's an important reference, right? So I see the blur passing over the ball, and I missed about the amount I thought it was going to miss by. So I lower myself to the to the top of the ball, and I go, okay. If I throw that way, it feels like I'm going to top the ball. Okay. Let's see what happens if I throw that way. Don't make sure to top the ball at this point. Make sure you throw the club in the direction you want to start it and see what happens. So sometimes you'll do that and you'll miss the ball again. That happens to me. That means you threw it properly. So if I throw the club that way, I'm throwing the club that way, throw the club that way. Yes, I threw the club that way. Priority number one. And then I rewind and I go, oh yeah, look at that, I did top it. In that order, Chad. So in that's, that order. that's it. You have to prioritize it first. And most people are putting the contact first on the list. Yes. And then they're going back and saying, okay, now when I make solid contact, I'll try and throw. Whereas, right. in fact, you need to get the throwing first. And then yes. the contact will come through messing around with it in the trial and error. Well, that's it. And then you realize the brain knows what solid contact feels like. Sure, it yeah. knows what it's looking for, right? So say, okay, if I go down to the grass, if I throw the club in that direction, a nice abandoned throw, um, yeah, that feels like dandelion stem is going to get cut. If that happens, I'm going to nut that thing. Okay, let's throw and find out. So I'm throwing So now that felt like it was right in the center of the face. <laughs> and that seven iron, my, this, my, my new blade seven irons, uh, that one went carry. Come on, baby. 185 carry. But wait, that, that's 185 Canadian, right? <laughs> that's like, it's so, like 160 down here. Come on, right? <laughs> Help me out. So that's and that's pretty stock for me. Blade, blade seven iron about 180, 185. God, I'm just so jealous. I'm just jealous. So all I, all I was doing is throwing the club, and then you realize, yes, I threw the club. I hit that thin. Don't go into the tailspin. That's like throwing darts. I missed the bullseye. Holy crap! What did I do wrong? <laughs> How about I take another sip of beer? grab another dart and go for the bullseye again. Yeah. That's all you need to do. And then as you throw, you get better at throwing. You get better at throwing, the throw becomes more accurate. You start hitting the, the ball more on the center of the face more often. And then you wake up and you got a 180 yard seven iron. Yeah. Let's see about that. Would you say that it's, um that it's a useful, that it's a, a good use of time that to practice doing just that, to throw the club without a ball yes. for a while first, or is Absolutely. that kind of a waste? And make sure you have a safe place because, you know, and, and the best way to throw at first is overhand, like you're throwing an ax. So you, you throw a few of those first. Well, not even actually throwing the club, but just practice, you know, throwing the club without a ball does that like to make the dry swings is that you sure sure i mean so you say all right i'm throwing the club throw the club throw the club right right you can feel the snap here you feel the release of the sword here so then you start, so if you throw the club and don't let go, you're going to feel that club yank on your shoulders in the direction that you want that ball to start. 
Now here's going to be the disconnect. This is, I think this is something that would be a necessary piece of information between you and the students. Um, the first thing that's going to happen, you're going to go out for two or three weeks and you're going to just dry swing, no golf ball, and you're going to practice getting your motion down and it's going to feel great. And you're going to think to yourself, man, when I go out to actually hit golf balls on the range, then you're going to get your little bucket. You're going to skip down there to the first three. You're going to change your swing. That's what everybody's yes. going to do. Well, what, what happens is, and this is where they say, okay, um, when I'm hitting the ball, my swing feels different. Well, yeah, that's because you're trying to hit a ball. You're not throwing the club anymore. Exactly. So that's why this prediction process is so key. And we look at those. The, so you got number one, I just showed you the levels. Number two, distance the ball. So you say, okay, when I throw the club with my arms free in front of me, where does that club want to pass? Oh, yeah, it looks like it wants to pass right here. So if I throw the club in that direction, it feels like I want to hit it solid. Nope, can't throw that way and hit it solid. Nope, can't throw that way. Yep, I can throw that way and hit it solid. And then ball position. Is that all right? Really, in relation to my intermediate point, no, I can't throw that way and hit the ball solid. It feels like I'm going to top that on the way up. That feels like I'm going to miss it on the way down. Oh, that feels like I'm going to nut it. So ball position, distance the ball, levels, club face. If I throw, I hook. If I throw, the ball starts right, it doesn't come back. Yeah, it feels like that's closed enough so that when I throw, it feels like the ball's going to want to do in the air what I feel like it should do in the air. Right. And that comes with a little trial and error. Say, hey, when I throw it that way, with this grip club relationship, the ball curves too much. You felt the speed there? Yep. You felt the nice throw? Yep. You threw it in the direction you wanted to start it? Yep, but it's curving too much. Face is too close. Don't change the swing. Nope. Change the face. <laughs> just, just open the face a little bit more, or close the face a bit more, depending. Most people will have to close it more. But some good players will have to sometimes open it a bit more. Like Savannah, she's got my daughter, she's got a super strong grip. And more often than not, I have to tell her to back off a little bit so that because she starts to draw it a little too aggressively. That's me right there. That's that's pretty much. And when I sit up, let's see if I can get back here. Um, yep. When I sit up now, I. I don't do it on purpose, but just what feels natural, this arm and the shaft get sort of on the same line. Yep. And then that's, I, I make sure, the bounce just started happening. I think it's yes. because I'm turning the arms off and I'm engaging the legs. Nice, because you're feeling the weight of the arm club unit and you're getting ready to heave that weight into your picture. And I can't tell you, you said it earlier, I can't even tell you how important it is to turn the arms off. And not just for part of the time, but the entire time. The legs and the feet and the hips, the big muscles, they just sling it. It's it's the arms. They have to be so, out of it. If you while while it, you're chatting there, I got my little three pound hammer. Yeah. And I want to toss it into my target like a horseshoe toss immediately you'll feel the engagement in your legs and you'll feel like the arm's not doing squat. The arm is just, the, the weight of the hammer is just hanging from the shoulder socket and it's the, the movement of the legs that's heaving that and turbocharging the arc of the swing, right? right? So one arm is about 9% of your body weight times two plus a club for a 200 pound guy, there's about 40 pounds of arms being used here. So I'm gonna take the weight of this, now I'm gonna throw it over there using my legs. There it is. All right. Well, that looked really good. You haven't seen a caddy view uh, on these videos yet. 
But uh, everything I've been picturing, you, you, you always say the first thing's first. You need your intermediate point. I've got a little piece of grass here. And then you need a flight plan. This is going to be a stock baby draw, which is what I've been working yep. on. Try not to make it too complicated. And then when yep. I set up, I want to feel like I can cut that grass right in front of the ball on my way to the target. If so, if you throw the club to the target, does it feel like the sole of the club's going to cut through the dandelion stem? Yes. Throw the club in that direction with abandon. Nice. That may have had just a little bit of ball thought in it, but I did have some or mostly throw the club in. That looked really good. The, the, did you did you feel a nice pause in that swing? Yeah. Did it show no, up? Notice, it, notice you didn't try to pause. It just happened because you were throwing the club in the direction you wanted the ball to start? Yes. Good. That was a little thin. That feel like a nice throw? Yeah, and that one was a little thin, so don't change the swing. That's right. <laughs> so many, I, I know I'm really, I am very guilty of that. It's then, okay, I need to do this and move that. Right. Everybody does that. There's nothing to fix. Throw it again. A little thin. Good. So you know what flush feels like? Oh, yeah. I've been so you just, a lot of these. you just threw three in a row with a little bit thin, correct? Right. So lower yourself a little more. Okay. Let's make, tell me when you're ready. All right. Okay. Lower the body a little more, lower the hands a bit more, and feel like if you throw the club in that direction, the sole of the club's going to drag a little more through the dirt. Okay. Give it a nice throw. How about that one? Much better. Much so better. notice what we did is we, we looked for a pattern first. So you threw three of them. You confirmed that you threw it and all three were thin. So you lower yourself a little bit more and you throw it again. Notice you hit it flush. That's right. Well, and that's the pattern. A lot of us, we see one bad shot and we're already making changes. You have to have two or more of the exact same result before you start looking at a problem. Right. And, and as you notice it wasn't much of a problem, was it? You just lower yourself a bit more. No, it just means that, that you weren't low enough to get solid contact. Yeah. thin again, but I felt like I threw it. Good. Which is good. So I'll go so back now, to what we did. How much, how much abandon did you have in that throw? You always talk about the effort scale. Yeah. I, I think my effort is a little high. Okay. So on a scale of 1 to 10, is it more than 3? Yes. Okay. So show me a nice throw where you get 7 out of 10 in velocity, but only 3 out of 10 in effort. <clears throat> How'd that feel? Yeah, much better. Let's see one of those. All right. Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. So when you throw it in that direction with ease, does it feel like the sole of the club's low enough to drag through the dirt? Yes. Give it a nice throw in that direction with ease. Wow, nice swing. That was a three. And I felt like it moved pretty, pretty fast. Yeah, and that, that, was, that was some good juice. So... When you look at that, you've got a trained eye. Do you see um, 
you got a little bit of a baseline because you've seen some, you did see a caddy view of my, my swing previously. But just kind of in, in, in rough guesses, does it look like when I do that that I make a little bit less of a flip? Does it look like it's a better throw in that direction? Okay. So, so here's what's important for you to get. As you, as you continue throwing into the direction that you want the ball to start, you'll get better at it. And that flip will phase itself out. That's what I'm naturally. Wondering. You see? So you got to allow the, the machine to evolve. What we want to do is put, put the facilitate your ability to evolve in the proper direction. Right. So when I see you throwing the club, I see the right body language. I see nice lag. And if the club face is closed enough and you throw it in that direction and the ball does what you want in the air, then fantastic. And everybody, you know, always has a, a slightly different flavor as far as the release is concerned. You know, my daughter has way more extension toward the target than I do. Mine is, is a, has a little more emphatic release because it's the way I grew up as a junior. Yeah. And, uh, so the, the flavor that you're going to get is, you know, is going to, is going to balance itself around your anatomy and, you know, your, um, your physicality and, and your, your, uh, your attitude, right? Yeah. So, but I, it's, it's looking really good. I think you're really on the right track. Well, I've been working, like I said, probably about 30 minutes every night, and I start with the feet together, and I start yep. with like a pitching wedge, and I'm just making small swings, and the first thing I want to do is feel solid contact for the first couple. Once I do that, then I'll, I'll start to open my feet up a little bit, build with the wedge a little more until I feel like, well, yeah, I'm getting it good. Hang on a sec. When you do feet together, you still want to throw. Oh, yeah, and that's my hips turning my – keeping my arms off. I'm just sort of making the checklist yeah. that I'm hitting all the points where I'm not engaging the arms. I'm not trying to create yep. or manipulate contact. The hips are, are I, what's driving it. Um, so you still want to perform the feet together drill with a prediction process. Yeah. So you say, when I chuck the club that way, feet together, it feels like I'm going to cut the dandelion stem and the sole of the club is going to stay a little bit along the ground. Right. And you make that prediction, and then, then you throw the club feet together. But then get the sidetracked onto, I want solid contact. That's getting back to the ball. That's no good. Correct. That's okay. no good. So, so when you do feet, you could do feet together, throwing the hammer. So, he, he, notice how I'm using my legs? Yeah. That's what's going to get you the juice that you need. Okay, so you don't want to go heave, hit the ball. You want to go heave, heave, or heave, throw. Have, have, so you, when you, have you ever heard of an Iroquois water pump? Iroquois water pump, no. It's, it, it's, uh, it, it's basically Stone Age uh, technology. It's Piston a, action, right? It's got a stick. And it's got a bar that goes across the stick, a hole in the middle, and a couple of pieces of what probably was deer sinew back in the day. But you, you wind it up, and then as you pull down, it spins the spindle, and it you just move the spindle up and down. It spins the spindle like a drill bit, and it's used to start um, an ember to, to create a fire. You have to check oh that one out. My. That's what I it reminds me of, is that you're coiling and building, and then you're uncoiling and you're slacking out and then you're building back up on the other side and then that's, that's the right. perpetual motion. It, it's a piston action. That's yeah. what we're built for. I'm late for work. I get so wrapped up in editing that now I'm behind. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I thought that there was a lot of aha moments in that. It's great working live with Sean like that over a Skype session because instead of just watching him, you can interact with him and you can ask him questions and you can get him to uh, sort of reiterate and go back over something that he said to clarify things or you can run your ideas past him and then he can tell you, yes, that's a good thought or no, you should stay away from that. And I think that 
that makes all the difference in the world. I've got some uh, some course video that I'm going to show you from when I went out on course and tried this for the first time. That's going to be coming up on the channel and uh, just saw some some really cool results. And uh, be on the lookout for that video. I can't help but just think about the future and where I'm going from here. It just feels fantastic and I'm very hopeful. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell off to the right so you don't miss anything coming up. I upload every Tuesday and every Sunday, and now it seems like I'm starting to upload on Thursdays as well at certain points, so I'm doing at least two videos a week, sometimes three. I appreciate all the support you guys are giving me. Leave me some comments down below. Don't forget to click thumbs up on this video, and I'll see you in the next one.